Great morning. It is Thursday, September 2nd. I'm going to pull one this morning from the Sacred Traveler. And we'll just see what is the pointing today. Give these a ruffle shuffle here. And we have answering the call. The time is now, okay? The time is now. So if you are being called to uh, start your path or maybe um, going to a new part of your path, don't delay. Um, so it says here, answering the call, the time is now. You've been called. The sacred journey always starts with a call. You might feel ready or you might be uncertain and not willing. But when you receive the call, you must respond. If you have been waiting for your life to turn out, the waiting is over. Your true and authentic life is happening. If you've been hoping for a sign, this is it. Right now you've been called. A gateway is opening for communications from the spirit realms. The energy of courage surrounds you. You may not know what the future brings, but you do know that it is now, it is now time to act and go forward. So it says... Uh, Spirit is trying to get your attention right now. Your spirit helpers are telling you this is your time. Listen with your heart. Your time is now. Do it now. Throw your shoulders back. Take a deep breath and plunge forward. The waiting is over. No matter what concerns or hesitations you may have, in the deepest sense you are ready. Believe, trust, follow the signs. There will be many and miracles will abound. Okay. So that's what the book says. So, yeah, if you are feeling that call, it's, it's time to move forward, you know. And it doesn't always mean that it's going to be easy breezy, okay. Just because you have a call, um, you know, there, sometimes we have to wade through the swamps. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is, okay. And especially... If you are being called and you feel you're being called to be a teacher, etc., then you're going to have the really difficult, hard, hard lessons to traverse because you can't help somebody else unless you can help yourself first. Unless you've walked a mile in those moccasins, as they say, uh, you can't understand. So you have to experience all of those difficulties and be able to come out the other side with the knowledge of how to get through it. So uh, this is for those that, that think that they want to or feel like they are being called to be a teacher. You know, not being a teacher is not about reading a book and then going out and parroting what you've read, okay? Um, anybody can do that. Okay, that's, that's not what a teacher is. A teacher is someone who has actually walked the path and now has a map, can provide a map to, as to the, the challenges that one may face. And you can't do it for another person, but you can give them, um, you know, some guidance. You can give them a little things. This is what I found works. This is what I found is a, is a difficulty. You know, you can give uh, talking points. You can give little nuggets that you've gleaned for somebody else along their path in their way. Okay. Um, and I see so many that want to be teachers that, uh, again, they haven't completed their journey. They, they may have think they've completed it, but they've got much further to go. So they are, you know, sometimes giving out of their ideations and their uh, projections about what they think it should be, uh, etc. And one can only truly give 
um, what one has experienced, okay? So on that note, I'm gonna leave this here, the Sacred Travel Oracle Cards. Um, says that for some of you listening, this may be the time that you're ready to jump in, okay? Now, uh, you could be, it doesn't matter which path, if you're going on a bhakti path, if you're going on a, a path of gyan, which is wisdom path, um, knowledge path, whatever path you're being called to, it doesn't matter, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, spiritual, you know, eventually, sometimes if you're walking a uh, religious, quote unquote, religious path, eventually that will usually dismantle until one comes to a spiritual path because you, you come to a point where you go beyond the dogmas. All of the things that men have put in that try to define and put in a box do's and don'ts and all of these regulations, etc., which have really nothing to do with spirituality. They have to do with men's ego and wanting to define and to um, categorize uh, a path, what they believe that it should be uh, based upon their um, ideations, okay? The do's, the don'ts, the all of this stuff. So, and you know, that's what Christ came to reform because Judaism, if you read the Old Testament, they've got a lot of do's and don'ts. Like you watch now, um, oh, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble with this. <laughs> the Hasidic Jews that are still following all the laws, you know, these are the laws and, um, you know, up to the point where you can't cook meat with milk, you can't, you know, you have certain dishes for this and then certain dishes for something else. Um, you can't mix these dishes with these. It's, you know, so there's a lot of things um, that they are ruled by laws. Um, and if this works for them, okay. You know, I'm not, not saying you need to give it up. I'm not saying that. If this is where you're at in life, um, then, then that's fine. You know, be where you're at in life. But again, as one goes through these and progresses, some things you will find dismantle and fall away um, as one goes forward, okay? Uh, just as, just, I, like I said, I started out in a Christian esoteric order. I've studied a lot of religious persuasions, Buddhist, Hindu, Christian, many um, different factions of Christianity. You know, everything from Christian science to holy rollers and uh, everything in between, you know, had traversed through them and looked at them and, and participated to, to see what was the value or lack thereof in each of these persuasions, okay? So everyone has to make their own journey. If you're being called, you begin where you're at, okay? You begin where you're at and you start to, to walk your journey and, uh, you know, um, Yeah, I think if I were a Catholic, I probably would have wanted to go into a nunnery and, uh, you know, um, because I was very drawn to that type of thing when I was quite young, um, very drawn to, to that. I used to walk from school and I would sometimes just stop in this Catholic church and go sit there in the pews in the quiet you know, um, and, and just sit there for quite some time, you know, and was very much interested in the saints, etc. and um, into the contemplative life, was very interested in the contemplative type of a life, okay? Uh, 
So I don't know how well I would have done in an actually a contemplative, you know, where you're ruled by bells that they tell you, you know, this is what you do. And the minute the bell, you stop and you could do whatever, you know, a thing of obedience, surrender and obedience. But no matter what path you walk, you have surrender and obedience. That That is a big, huge part of it. Okay, surrender and obedience, whether you're doing it in a uh, place that's um, defined like a like a nunnery or a, you know, um, in that type of situation that's more structured or whether you're living the life on your own in the midst of whatever is happening in life, there's still that that. Um, obedience and surrender obedience and surrender along the way okay and a lot of times that's a tough one to do surrender letting go of these things that you know ego wants to grasp onto and uh but you know part of the path is letting go of these things okay letting go and not my will but thy will be done you know we are not the controllers of everything in the universe although ego wants to control everything in its little realm it wants to have its kingdom you know and be the head of its kingdom whatever is coming in um but uh again on the path we have to surrender and let go of that okay so thanks for tuning in much love and light and we'll see you online